Hey everybody, Rob Cohe, product manager for Autodesk Fusion 360. Um, my team looks after basically all things 2D and 3D in the uh, in the product. And today, I'm going to go over how to how to model this in a new modeling methodology um, that uh, unlocks a few workflows that were previously unavailable in Fusion 360. Um, Fusion, if you've worked with it, is uh, out of the box, kind of a top-down modeler. It, it wants local components and those types of things. But we introduced some new functionality in the product that enabled me to design that assembly all from bottom up, all from uh, techniques that I'm familiar with in Autodesk Inventor. So if you're familiar with Fusion, go ahead and skip to the next video. Go ahead and skip to video two here. I'm going to give you a brief introduction of kind of the UI and some basic sketching. Um, but if you're unfamiliar with Fusion 360, stick around. I'll show you a few things. So basically, anytime you start a design in Fusion 360, you're going to start in what we call the design workspace. And in the design workspace, basically, people start sketching. Um, and we have all of the things that you would expect in, in your sketching tools, right? Um, as well as things like navigation. And I, I mean, I've used Inventor for 20 years, so I want the navigation, um, zooming, panning, uh, rotating all those things to be similar to what I want. And I'm also going to set my design units to, uh, to millimeters. And I know all of us in the States are like, what are you doing? But anyway, um, it's what I had for reference for this assembly. So that's what we're going to go with. All right. So as you can see, I'm rolling my wheel mouse back and forth. I'm holding the middle mouse button down to do things like pan. Um, every time you see that little compass menu come up on the screen, I'm right clicking my mouse. Okay. So as you would expect, I have things like object tracking. So I wanted to know about where the center of that circle was when I was sketching the, sec the second circle. I sketched the original circle at the origin. These are all just best practices. Always try to uh, build your part around um, some sort of reference point. When it comes to par parameters and dimensions, um, you know, it's a parametric modeler. You can change the dimensions and it'll change the value. Um, you can make equation or dimensions equal to one another and so forth. So there's a number of different ways you can execute commands as well. I can hit the line button on the command dialog box. I can shortcut key the button L um, to draw these uh, parallel lines. You can see I'm trimming objects out here, but really what I've, what I've sketched is a slot, right? Sketch circle, sketch circle, sketch line, dimension, dimension, dimension. Um, that's fine. It's a really, I mean, it's, it's not a very complex piece of geometry, but one of the things you're going to hear from me throughout this whole tutorial is use the right tool for the job, right? I shouldn't have sketched a circle, a circle, and a line. What I should do is use the actual command slot, right? So a slot says, okay, so what's the distance between the centers? I'll go ahead and type in my distance. And I could type in the angle, but I don't need to here because I don't want that to be a parameter. Um, and then what's the... Uh, What's the diameter of your circle? And I made a mistake. The first of many I will make in this uh, series of tutorials, by the way, but uh, I typed in 30. Uh, I really needed it to be 60 millimeters. Um, and now I have the basic shape for which I can start uh, a feature. 